So yeah. I, I have so many questions, Penny, and I know our listeners and viewers are the same. They always, always pile up loads of questions when they hear you talk because it spawns um, amazing things. And one of the first things that came to me about what you were saying was that there was a time when I would have dismissed that very quickly and very easily. Me now, too. Yeah. And, and I know why. I, I can understand why, because our, like our education system, our, our, our general understanding of our place in the cosmos is very, very limited. And it's only when we explore and ask questions and open our minds to possibilities that we begin to think this is entirely possible, absolutely possible. And not only that, but the evidence is already there for us to look at but we've been we, we take the tourist spin talk about egypt again we, we follow the tourist line on everything yeah. you know and we believe it and uh, it's it's the it's the bigger picture that i find absolutely intriguing but Very i nice. want to bring it in a way full circle because you know when you when we talked earlier about electricity you know and us being electrical bodies and living on an electrical body right is is there anything that we can do, like, to mitigate this, to avert it, like, as, a, as an electrical beings? I think the best answer, if you can't go underground, is consciousness. Right. Period. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you come in, well, I'll share one little thing that was kind of discouraging, um, but it was good sense, yeah. common sense. I was talking to the sun. I have conversations with the sun on a mm -hmm. fairly regular basis. We have a small love affair going. Right. So, you know, it's like, hi, how are share. you? Share, <laughs> share. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs men, right, Penny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, girls. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so I was saying, after I found out about the science, I, I just, you know, came across the science. Um, it wasn't a conspiracy theory. It was the science that was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, so I'm out going to uh, feed my chickens and and I stop for a minute, talk to the sun. Hi, you know, I just heard that you have these outbursts and um, I just want to ask you, you know, could you just not do that yeah. while I'm alive? <laughs> and yeah. it was so you want us to do that when somebody else is alive? Your uh, children, your grandchildren? Right. And I thought, oh, I said, no, well, uh, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. You, you know, don't want to do it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So then I said, well, um, mm. you know, could you, could you just skip that? Skip it all together. <laughs> well, are you telling um, me, are you telling me that we you want us to not be what we are when that's exactly what you teach is be who you are and what you wow. are and who you are so wow. i was like okay. you come to dispense with the guilt complex yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you know penny real quick just to interject i don't want to throw you off your 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 thought but um, it reminded me of a story that i saw just the other day where a man i think it might have been a picture on linkedin or somewhere i can't remember but where he was showing a big uh, bite from a from a snake that he got in his hand it was still bloody and he was explaining that um the, the the snake was in a in a brush fire you know a forest fire and he he tried to save the snake by getting getting it out of the fire and the snake bit him and somebody said um yeah, oh no the snake bit him and then he dropped it of course you know yeah. as a natural reaction and then he went to try and get it out of the fire again and somebody said to him, like, are you crazy or what? You know, first of all, I can understand you maybe wanting to save the snake, but after he bit you, like, why would you go and try and save him again? Yeah. And he said, it's the nature of the snake to bite. It's the nature of me to help. Oh, wow. Very and nice. I thought, whoa, that yeah. is just. Yeah. So like when you talk about, do you want this to happen to your children and not you, you know, or do you want to happen it to some happen to somebody else, not you? Yeah. it's the same thing yeah it is yeah. Yeah. it is and that's the nature of the sun to yes. have to discharge the buildup of electrical power yeah. that yeah. it has that it accumulates over twelve thousand years yes and i think that that's yeah. just 
So, so that's a perfect, <laughs> so let me just say the last thing it said. Mm -hmm. um, I said, well, you know, well, what, what can we do? How do we handle this? And the son said, prepare. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. So I took my eggs and came in the house and thought, okay, well, that's common sense, prepare. So that then led to this whole, okay, what if this and what if that? And what about, you know, all these different scenarios through my mind and came down to, I can't think of a single thing that would allow me to manage the Pacific Ocean rolling across my country, number one, right. um, other than if I'm ready, I would step right into that next world or I would you know, somehow be invited into a portal or, but yeah. you will have to have the consciousness yeah. before you're gonna get any invitations like that. Yes. So it came down to, it's about consciousness. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now that, that is, a, is a beautiful answer and it's a beautiful possibility. But I know that people will answer no more to myself or will ask no more to myself. How do you do that? <laughs> like, no, uh, you have to, um, I, you have to have had a, almost a near-death experience once in order to understand that when push comes to shove, you become more conscious, not less. Gotcha. So that's the first thing. Yeah. If you haven't had a near-death experience, then you know you're going to have to take somebody's word for it. Yeah. Um, but what I have pictured is that you know you keep breathing you stand your ground you know you mentally and emotionally join hands and join minds with everybody around the planet that is um going to experience this together and you all step together into that new earth right and and you if you haven't got the consciousness if you haven't figured out how to raise your frequency a little bit yeah. um doesn't have to be a lot yeah. then um you might not be able to hold it yeah. i mean you might not be able to stay in that new earth but if you make even half an effort um yeah. then yeah it's a possibility so, i'm sorry I'm, I'm asking all these questions but in a way i know exactly what angel rose is thinking no, you so don't. <laughs> <I> do. <laughs> She talked, you tell she talked, <laughs> no seriously she has talked and lectured on the whole idea of a dimensional split and the a new earth you know yeah. and, and making a conscious choice yes in for a new earth as opposed to going with the status quo or following the old dogma you know yeah and um and i find that exciting actually i do too no yeah. i started yeah. visiting the new earth but you know, I was like, I, I'm just, how about, you know, yeah. I think I was taken there first by some beings of light way back in the beginning of Kundalini. Yeah. Remember me, maybe we talked about it on one of the very earliest shows that we ever did, yeah. um, in which these three beings of light came and got me off the roof. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. There was no sleeping in the first three years of Kundalini. None. Yes. So um, I would get out i would end up out of the body sitting on the roof watching what was happening yeah. Yeah. i remember you saying you were in a closet watching some visitors in your kitchen uh, yeah i have to say um yeah there's there's so many stories that i could yeah. tell but yeah. the these three beings of light came um you know reached down said come with us so i reached up they took me by the hand you know it was like grabbing onto an electric wire um, a shock all the way through, like an electric shock, enough that I couldn't, enough of a shock that you can't let go, which is probably good. Um, mm. And away we went, 90 million miles an hour, light streaking by, just like you see in the Star Wars warp speed kinds yeah. of, of shows. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I see up ahead this planet, and I think, wow, that looks kind of like Earth. The closer we got, it's like, that looks a lot like Earth. And then we landed. I was like, are we, are we back on Earth? Did we go anywhere? Mm. Um, 
but it was this completely different environment. It looked just like earth in terms of grass and soil and trees and the sun and the clouds and the breezes and buildings, not very many buildings, but um, a few. Flowers galore, oh my gosh. I went there three times. They came and got me three different times. And the last visit, they said, you know, you're welcome to stay. And I didn't, I couldn't take that because I said, I've got little kids. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaving my children. Um, and they just smiled and said, you'll be back. Right. And, um, and so uh, that was 1980, yeah. 81, something like that. Yeah. And it, a couple of years ago, maybe 2016 or 17, I thought, you know, um, I wonder if I could go back there. Maybe it was 2019. I'm not even sure. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. But I thought, well, let's see. I did make it back there. I had been there once or twice since those early three times, um, but mostly by accident. And so now it's like, this is the intention. Yes. That's a whole different animal. Um, yeah. And so I, I got myself this imaginary ladder that reached up into the heavens and I started climbing the ladder and I'm climbing, climbing. It gets blacker and blacker and darker and darker. Yeah. And I just kept going. It seemed like I was climbing forever. And then, and the goal was as I climbed, the instructions were my consciousness raises, my frequency set raises. Interesting. And all of a sudden, I see the planets right there. So I hop off the ladder and land on the planet, on wow, the, the new earth. Yeah, um, yeah. And I had some astounding experiences wow. that night. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then I had a couple of, of experiences in which I was in both places at one time. And then a couple others where I went back to visit saying, well, how does this work? Or how do you do that? Or how, you know, different questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I yeah. had, had an experience. You should tell Penny about it at the liquid crystal train. Remember, or the, the um, Mercury. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think I told her that story. How I was underneath all these two female beings who were, looked identical and had liquid golden hair. I, you know, I, I thought it was a dream, but now I don't think it was a dream. Gave Probably me this, not. like a Tibetan bowl full of this orange gold liquid and told me to drink it i remember that yeah, yeah. So when, I, when i did them i was instantly in Ooh. going through these underground tunnels under the earth at like hyperspeed and uh i i said i told ahano i said it felt like a liquid silver train because that's how fast it was moving but it did take me under the platform at giza and i did look to my left and i got off on this platform underneath the pyramid and wow. I looked to my left and I knew there was a city under there. There had been a city under there. E, yeah. But it had been, but it was rubble. You know, it was like, it was rubble now. It like had been there, but it was not functional. And then all of a sudden I was just in another crystal city. I felt like I jumped in overtone or something. And, and, and there, they, these beings said to me, you're going to be a healer in this city. And I remember thinking, Really, you think I can do that? And they both just smiled and they disappeared. <laughs> and, and I woke up in the morning and my hands were on fire. Oh. And my girlfriend attuned me, called and told me she was told to attune me to Reiki, all the levels. Uh, and that's when I started doing psychic surgery on people. After that, I, uh -huh. all of a sudden my x ray vision kind of turned on. Yep. And, um, but I, I just like, well, what was that? What is it about these tunnels? And it's interesting because, of course, we're reading Randu Cinema stuff. and. He's talking about the first tunnel to Egypt. Oh, and wow. He said that it was the only one that it's physical to a certain point, and then after that, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I thought, well, I was definitely in some altered space because I was traveling so fast, and it would take these right angles, 90 degree turns. Yep. And I'd black out when it did that. I remember in the dream, it was like, I'd just black out for a moment, and then I'd come to, and I'd say to myself, now, how did that physical thing turn at that right angle, you know? Yeah. At that speed. At that speed. <laughs> mm. yeah. But I felt like it had something to do with the liquid they gave me, you know? But I did feel like I was in liquid mercury, you know? So it was, 
There's a form of technology that does exactly that, but it's yeah. not in this three-dimensional system. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I thought, well, I mean, all I can say what happened as a result is I started having x-ray vision and I started doing psychic surgery on people. Wow. Um, which, which I haven't done in a long time, basically, because I was a little burnt out from it after 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, some well, pretty I interesting things, though, I have to say. Um, but now, you know, we were practicing doing a little bit of um, right brain, left brain writing the other day. Oh. And uh, the message I got was they told me it was time to start expanding my consciousness. Oh. That I, I wasn't expanding far enough. I needed to start practicing some time travel you know, in consciousness and start going other places, um, which I haven't done yet, but because so I'm teaching, a, you know, we're doing a little group every month and that's the exercise that I'm going to have them do. But uh, oh, wow. I thought, okay. and funny, my friend who was next to me got the same message for herself, you mm. know, it's time, time to expand, time to go yep. to an unlimited place and practice some of this. And I told her, you know, years ago, I practiced teleportation. I just had a yeah. book that basically told you how to do it. And it was quite easy. It was just picture this blue light, focus on where you want to end up. And right. all of a sudden, when, and I was interested in a boy at that time. So I was always trying to go to where I wanted to go. Perfect where motivation. <laughs> right. He was a construction worker. And all of a sudden, I'm focusing, focusing. And all of a sudden, I trip over a concrete block. In, his, in his workplace. On his workspace. And I, and I was so startled by it that I said, I better get the hell out of here. You know? <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder how I got here now, considering that. <laughs> I see, I do things like that. I try to succeed, and then, yeah. I, then I stop. You know, it's kind of yeah. like the time I dematerialized kind of shook me a little bit. Like, well, what if you can't ever get back? And you had young kids yeah. at the time. Yeah, and I did have a practice it since yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it's it's time, because I don't feel like I'm I'm doing the big thing that I came here to do, you know? Yeah. The time, Angie Rose just said to me this morning, and it reminded me to tell you, because you said about going to the new earth. She said to me this morning, uh, it's time for us to do a quantum jump to the new earth. Yeah. And you know, uh, we used to do that quite regularly. Oh, you, you know, did? That kind of Not to the new earth, but we'd quantum jump. Quantum jump to everywhere and anywhere and do all okay. sorts of crazy yeah. things. Yeah. That's yeah. very good practice. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it brings me back to when we talk about portals, Penny. Um, and, you know, you were mentioning consciousness, but I remember when Ahano first took me to Ireland and we went up to Ishnak Hill mm. and uh, we we just came upon this portal. I mean, it was just obvious. The energy was just big wall of energy. And it was the implications were if you step into this, you know, you're saying yes to a divine marriage. And we both knew yeah. it. And we both looked at each other. and We said, yes, you know, yeah. but it was palatable. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was right there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah you can feel it yes so i wonder like would people just be guided to portals i wonder you know because it i just, think it yes. spontaneously you know I, not only that there are certain uh people around that can actually create portals <laughs> and i have a couple of times sent out messages saying get your portal equipment ready <laughs> So yeah, right. we're gonna need it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so well, Stockholm Canyon definitely feels like that. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. Yeah. And we didn't explore it nearly to the expanse that it is that day. You know, we only went through certain sites, but there's a whole back end of Pablo Benito we didn't even explore. Okay. And and other little cities that connect. But um, it was just the feeling of home I got there that made me so attracted to it yeah. you know it's just so loving and so this is home this is happy you know yeah, yeah. wow so when, so with people then in this in this coming obviously not everybody's prepared to go underground or build an under, underground bunker um even right. though they're discovering more tunnels all over the earth which kind of show you that yeah this is a system going all through the earth um right. So I don't know, and I've had friends that have left the planet recently, you know, and, and thought to myself, now what's that about? And I just think that's what's happening. I wouldn't be, and part of me wouldn't be surprised if I left. And another part of me is like, no, I'm here for the duration. I don't really know. Okay, but I know that energetically, Penny, I am so dizzy all the time. I cannot stand or walk for longer than from here to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I'm just being blasted by something. And it was fine for a while, and then it just started up again. And ah, but whatever. Wow. That, that's another. Sometimes story. that's B12. Keep that in mind. B12. B12. Okay. You have to have a lot of B12. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, as you're talking, I, you know, don't don't leave, Angel. No, don't leave. <laughs> we, your services are needed. Absolutely. Um, now more yeah. than ever. Yeah. And and it'll be when it's time to go, we'll we'll know. We yeah. will know. Yeah. But in the well, I want to be a part of the group that's holding hands, Penny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I need you to be one of those people gathering, you know, the people holding hands in case we um either get an opportunity to enter a portal mm -hmm. or all move over to the new earth together. Yeah. Um and yeah. I think, you know, I'm, I should probably send you, I wrote a small book recently called um, Planet Earth, her people, her history, her people, her, and her current crisis, or her current dilemma. That's oh. what it was. Um, yeah. And the back chapter, back chapter, second to the last, maybe your last one or two, is about a couple of my experiences on the new earth that I have written up. And I should probably send you those and say, see if you can get people to to go to this place and create, mm. you know, create right. some experience there. Because yes. the last few times I was there, I met this um, guy there, this uh, being who did not quite look fully like an earth human, um, just incredibly powerful. But he said, you know, you um they've been instructing me on this next book I'm writing right now, but he said, uh, you know, get people to understand uh, the mechanism, invite people to the new earth. We need people, we need, you know, population. Um, mm -hmm. And that brings me actually, did I um, share with you the story about the woman in the red sky? Remember that story? <laughs> the night of the red no. sky. No. Um, so in my work with Dr. Levengood, mm -hmm. um, he would have meetings. He was connected to people from all over the planet um, doing different kinds of work with uh, alien stuff, mm -hmm. so ET stuff. And, um, and so he would have these gatherings, not very often, but he had several in which he invited everybody who either had an implant or had been um, having visitors, <laughs> um, right. or had been picked up, et cetera. And there would be 20, 20, 25 people there at these meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd all talk in chairs. So I met this woman and her name was Landy. And she um, told this story about when she was, I don't, I can't remember how old she was, but um, she was in bed at night and she had this memory of being picked up by these people who did not look human. And she was, she didn't sound like she was upset about that. Like a lot of people get really upset. Um, she was just kind of matter of fact. So mm -hmm. she's in bed one night and she's young. I think she was like six or five or something like that. And, um, and she, I, I'm pretty sure she was young. I might have, had, maybe she was older, never mind the age. <laughs> so she gets this urge in the middle of the night to go downstairs, get out of bed, go downstairs and open the front door. And she's trying to go back to sleep and the urge just keeps getting more and more powerful. And finally she's like, so she gets up and she goes downstairs, opens the front door and on the front porch are two beings. One is a small gray and the other one is a very tall um, being from elsewhere. And they said to her, um, we came to tell you that, um, that if the night of the red sky occurs, that we will come to pick you up and you will have zero time to decide yes or no, 
you you have to have already decided. And right. she said while she was standing there, maybe she was older. And I think the young story I'm thinking about is similar. Right. Um, the different guy is a man. But anyway, she's looking at the sky and she said it looked like it was just on fire, like it was mm -hmm. boiling and roiling and um, red and um, like the atmosphere, the sky was on fire. And um, in that a moment she had the thought does it have anything to do with what's going on in the sky and the telepathic answer was yes and then she was told you know between now and this possible future time make up your mind because there won't be time to say goodbye to children or husbands or pets or even lock the door or pack a suitcase or anything it's now or never um, and so I remembered that story and thought, holy cow. So I wrote about that in my book, Consciousness and Energy, Volume 4. And she, um, and, and then I called her to ask her if it was, if she minded if I shared her story. And she said, no, go ahead. And so then I sent her a copy of the book and I had put the story of my visits in the back of that book. Um, visits to the new earth and um, you know and some of the other things and she said to me um, she called up and said hey I have also been asked to help build the new earth because I had been asked to help build the new earth and um, and I think you are one of those people building that new earth and Gail <laughs> and you too possibly Ohana uh, well, you know, it's strange. Many, many years ago, I don't know, I was probably, I don't know, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. This lady had built a huge labyrinth behind her house in Barrington, Illinois. Oh, That's why okay. I went with my friend. It was the first time I ever walked a labyrinth. And I'm walking around and, and all of a sudden these stones start talking to me. These, they were grandfather stones and they were showing me a vision of Everybody in my life, like my, why, why was my grandmother my grandmother? Why were my parents my parents? And I was, I was walking around, they were kind of saying, I don't remember really what the meaning was now, but there came a point where all of a sudden I was off planet and there was a whole lot less people on the planet. Yeah. You know? And then next thing I know, I'm back down on the planet, only I'm a teacher. Okay. I'm helping the new civilization, you know? And, yeah. and that was a long time ago. And I, I think of that every now and then, you know? Wow. That, uh, that yeah. because I felt like they took me off. A lot of less, a lot of people left. The The earth looked pretty white, quote unquote, you know? Yeah. Um, in terms of no vacancy, you know? And, yeah. and then I was back because we were starting again, you know, we were rebuilding. Yeah. So I don't know if it was this earth or a different earth, but I was taken off and by then, you know, it was kind of like you could you were considered some sort of a master by then to the people who are here, you know, like okay. they, did, they were babies compared to us who left and came back, you know, to teach. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm nowhere near that. But, you know, I am been getting messages like, OK, time to time to time yeah. travel again, time to, you yep. know, explore different universes. And yeah, just you have to practice every so you often do. or you lose the. Okay, what did I do before? You, know, you yeah, have know. to kind of mm -hmm. keep it fresh. Hope you enjoyed that discussion with Penny. Do leave your comments below and we will respond. Thank you very much. You can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and on our website at wordofempowerment.com. Don't miss an episode. Hit the subscribe button now.